Um, so today I'll be presenting this um, bin to cell paper, a software paper showing um, how you can reconstruct individual cells in um, Visium HD data. So um, short paper, but very, very useful paper. Um, so just as a very um, general overview of um, this software before I get into the details. Um, so the idea is that it's working with Visium HD data. Um, so Visium HD data comes with, um, there's three different analysis, like resolutions that you can use. So it, the, the basic resolution is the two micrometer, um, these two micrometer bins of gene expression. That's the highest resolution. Um, so 10X Genomics actually recommends most analyses be done at this eight micrometer um, resolution, um, which essentially just is pooling together the, the bins from the two micrometer resolution. It's not like separately measuring um, different probes or anything. Um, and then there's also like a 16 bin resolution. So um, yeah, they recommend doing most analyses at eight micrometers um, just because it's just so much data. But um, in this case, the idea here is that we can actually, with the two micrometer resolution, we can actually, it's subcellular. So you can um, pull together um, basically these bins and then um, you can have individual cells. So um, the overall goal with this Python based package bin to cell um, is that you segment nuclei in the H and E image and then you can pull together these two micrometer bins um, that overlap the cellular segmentations. Uh, and then as a result, you get these, this um, AND data object. So basically like um, similar to a spatial experiment in R um, where you have genes with features and then the cells are um, observations instead of like previously with Visium standard, we would have spots, right? So now we have individual cells. Um, so I think this is sort of like the, almost like a gold standard of like, this is what people were aiming for in spatial transcriptomics to have um, almost transcriptome-wide data that's um, spatial, where you have spatial locations of things and you also have individual cells. So it's like sort of like all everything we want together. Um, and so the main figure actually goes into a little bit of the workflow, but I think this supplementary figure um, actually describes things in a little bit more detail. So in panel A here, um, the first step is like the scaled H and E image step. So normally, like Space Ranger provides a um, various. They, there's a low and high resolution image that are much smaller than the original um, H and E image, but those are actually too small for um, performing segmentations on, or too low resolution. Um, so this function takes the original full resolution H and E image, scales it down to a resolution that's still high enough to do segmentation, but low enough to be computationally reasonable. Um, and then there's this wrapper around this um, segmentation tool called Stardist um, that has these pre-trained um, pre models that are designed to segment nuclei and H&E images. Um, so it's a convenient wrapper, and it does the nuclear segmentations. Um, and then insert labels, I'll describe a little bit more in the the next slide, but basically it's just adding um, the cellular segmentations are, um, I think, polygons. And then insert labels sort of associates the segmentations with individual bins on the Visium HD data. Um, and then since we're only getting nuclei and we really want cells, there's this um, expand labels step. Um, and I'll also, they actually go into a lot more detail about how just the settings were chosen for um, doing that. But um, by default, it basically just goes, it looks two bins um, around each nucleus, sort of like a two bin radius. Um, and so now we, we have cellular segmentations that are associated with individual bins. Um, so that's like the primary um, way that the segmentations are performed, but they also provide this secondary um, option that they say catches some um, cells that are missed with the primary method. So that's described in panel B here. Um, 
in this grid image function, they're basically rasterizing the gene expression. So instead of trying to use the H and E image for segmentation, they're using the gene expression itself and sort of creating like this fluorescent, it's almost like a fluorescent image that they can actually use the pre-trained Stardust model for fluorescent images. And then it's like trying to segment gene expression directly. Um, and then similarly, inserting labels and then in combination, we have like a bunch of cells. So there's two different methods and then we have all these different cells associated with bins that can create the, the object. Um, and so this sort of describes a little bit more of the um, this the rest of this figure um, describes um, how the insert labels function works, I think. So like I said, after like the start is step, the segmentation step, um, you really get polygons um, from each cell um, shown as circles here. But um, they overlap bins in sort of like an imprecise way. And then the insert labels function just like associates the uh, segmentations with the closest bins. So it makes it more square, I guess. Although it can have, um, it doesn't have to be perfectly square as long as it overlaps the bins exactly. Uh, and like I said, there's this expand label step um, that by default is um, two bins. Um, but they show this example where like we have two different cells, one in yellow and one in blue. Um, and then there's this like green um, bin, which is equidistant from the nuclei of, of the yellow and blue cells. And they say that like in this case, to, in order to, to choose which cell it gets assigned to, they actually um, like they use PCA to, on the gene expression um, to summarize the gene expression information and then to see where the, uh, the gene expression from that bin um, locates in PCA space. Uh, and then it's basically in PCA space, it's going to be generally closer to one than the other. And in this case, it looks more like a yellow cell. So they're saying like, well, actually, the gene expression looks like it should belong to the yellow cell. So let's assign it there, even though it's equidistant from yellow and blue. So that's sort of how they decide in those cases of ambiguity. Um, for the insert label step, does the polygon have to overlap the centroid of the, um, like the center of the, um, the bin? Um, or like, that's what it looks like from the drawing? I believe so. Yeah, I believe the centroids are used. I can't remember off the top of my head. So like if you get a irregular polygon shape that covers most of the bin, but not the center, it would get excluded, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, although I'm not sure. I don't believe it can be. So it has to be, what's it called? Star convex, I think, in star disk. So I don't, I don't think it. Oh, okay. think it's an option. So the, it's not all types of polygons. In there. Yeah, it's specific. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they call it star convexity, but I forget. Um, so yeah, in general, this should be most of the inside of the cell, as long as it changes the center. Um, and they're being in the two micron bins, right? Yeah, these are two micron by two micron um, each. But can you use it for the eight or the sixteen? Um. Bins? So I don't think the. I don't think those are sub cell there. So, so mm -hmm. I don't think you're really getting the same benefit if you do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I just don't think, I think the cells are just too large or um, small at that point. Um, Sorry, Nate. Uh, yeah. The cell is defined only by one polygon, or it can like, expand to two polygons depending on the size. Um, so, yeah, I mean, one cell would be one. Polygon, um, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not sure if that answers. So you can only have one nucleus type of thing. Oh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, uh, yeah. I forgot that was a uh, a possibility. Yeah, these are just one nucleus each. Um, yeah. So this is the figure one. Um, I, I think. Panel A is sort of what I already described, the segmentation step and um, ultimately assigning bins to cells. Um, so 
in the next step, they, they did this comparison to try to see um, how much better binge cell was as compared with like the standard eight micrometer um, resolution Bayesian data that 10X recommends when you're analyzing HD. Um, so what they did is they used this tool called Cell Typist, which um, they had this reference MRFISH data set. Um, and Cell Typist um, basically transfers annotations from the, the cell types onto the spatial data. So it's using like the gene expression profiles um, to try to identify which um, either which bin or which cell in the case of bin to cell, um, like um, what cell type each of those belongs to uh, based on the gene expression profile. Um, so um, in panel B, um, they show like this zoomed in area um, where their, their point here is that um, in the eight, if you're trying to identify cells from the eight micrometer bins, um, well, of course, one thing is you're getting these this sort of grid-like assignment of the spatial locations, which is not precise. Um, but also there's areas where it um, over, over represents the cellular density. Um, and then also under representation. So that's where the, those arrows, those arrows are pointing to areas where it's too dense and then areas where it's missing, but they expect cells to actually be there um, based on the ground truth from our fish data. Um, whereas bin to cell gets this more realistic distribution of both where the, the spatial locations are more precise, they're not in this grid format, and then they're not getting these artifacts of like over or under representation. Um, so, um, yeah, um, they also did these two other metrics to show where bin to cell was, um, sort of better than these, the eight micrometer, um, physical data. Um, so on panel D, um, the cell type is program actually gives like this confidence score based on, um, I believe it's like how similar, um, the gene expression profile is to like the nearest cell type, essentially. Um, so it's like if it confidently looks like it's a particular cell type, it gives it a good score. Whereas if it doesn't look like any of the reference cell types, it's not going to get a good confidence score. So um, each point here is a cell type. They had a lot of a really fine resolution cell types here. Um, and in general, bin to cell was giving much higher confidence scores, which they say is a better sign than like we're getting more realistic data um, than the eight micrometer bins. Um, this other metric they used in panel E was um, just the number of unique genes that were expressed. Um, so this part actually I was a bit confused by, given that the um, it's essentially like the eight micrometer bins are the same data as in the two micrometer bins. So I don't see how the uh, this was a bit confusing to me, but maybe we can talk about this after. Um, well, maybe the eight micrometer bins include a lot of like two micrometer bins that are like fall outside of the nucleus. Mm, so, so like maybe there's less um, transcription. So yeah. you're adding more space, but more zeros maybe. Okay. And maybe you're missing some, some two micrometer uh, bins that are actually inside of the nucleus that have a lot of activity. Like, uh, okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Actually, like you're not you're not having the perfect boundaries of the cells. Yeah, the micrometer bins. Um. Yeah, so I guess in this case, like we're actually pretty much losing information based on the bins being poorly distributed for the the gene expression information. Um. So yeah, you're getting much you're getting better gene counts as a result, which is um, pretty important. Um, I think also this is likely related to the confidence scores on the left. Um, but in all, all cell types spin to cell have greater expressed genes. Um, so the effect is pretty pronounced here. Um, so um, this is moving on to a different data set. I guess I, I didn't mention that the previous data set was, um, same thing keeps getting in the way. Um, a mouse brain data set. And in this case, this is a human data set, a human cancer data set. Um, this is part of a figure where, again, they're doing this eight micrometer to bin to cell comparison. 
Um, in this case, we're looking at ROI two that is shown in the top image of each on each side. Um, and we have the predicted cell type calls of the bins or the individual cells. Um, so they, they made two points here. Um, first, they were, they were getting more of these like this CMS two um, cell type, um, more accurate calls in the bin to cell in this one region. Um, and then the other point that they made, which is something that was, um, is essentially that like in the eight micrometer section, we can see cell type calls in the area that's even outside of tissue. So it's just the resolution's not good enough here where um, we're getting like cell type calls where there isn't even tissue. Uh, where it's been to cell uh, is precise enough that we're not getting any, um, there's just not any cell type calls there, which of course is more biologically accurate. Um, um, and then this is moving on to a, uh, a different part of the, this is actually sort of a separate functionality of this tool that um, unrelated to the actual um, cellular segmentations or anything. Um, but they point out this like novel technical effect um, where you actually have entire rows or columns in these in this um, the grid structure that VisiMHD has, um, where entire rows will have higher gene expression than other rows um, or, or columns in the same way. Um, and so you can actually, on the left image here with the um, gene expression counts, um, it's pretty visually apparent that you get this like grid-like grid -like effect. And so this is something that like, would be important to adjust for. And so part of the package has um, a step that does this adjustment where they're adding up counts across the rows um, and sort of using that as a, um, taking like a quantile of it and then dividing by that quantile. And um, so that sort of normalizing by the total counts of the row or column. Um, and then in the, you see that like, it mostly removes this, this, um, this technical effect in the, the middle panel when, when they do this adjustment. Um, and yeah, so this is like something that we just have to watch out for, I think, in our data. And um, we might want to use this function um, even if we don't necessarily use Pentacel, although I think we'll, this will be a useful tool. Um, um, so another thing that they discussed is that like um, there were like reasons, I guess, they picked that. Um, I mentioned that they do this two bin expansion to identify cells from nuclei. Um, but they have this actual entire section in the, the supplementary, um, sort of a discussion section in the supplementary materials where they described like um, different things they tested with regards to the expansion strategies and why they ended up with the defaults that they did. Um, so as I mentioned, the first, the segmentation is actually segmented to the nuclei. Um, in the, in the paper, they proposed two different expansion strategies. So one was the one I already discussed, which is just doing a fixed distance of, by default, two bins. Um, they also discussed, like, um, I think, three and four. Um, um, but then a different strategy altogether is to try to do a, um, a cell-specific distance. Um, essentially, the, the idea is that, like, there should be a rough ratio between the cell's nucleus and its um, the cell cell body in terms of the volume, um, which would correspond to um, based on like the inferred volume, even though it's two dimensional. Um, so they said that like, that four would be a typical ratio. So the the cell body might in general might be four times uh, bigger than the nucleus. Of course, that would be cell type dependent, but um, this is just like a different type of strategy that's cell specific, at least. Um, so different findings they had, like in summary, things that they found was that like when you do less expansion, so like less um, a smaller radius in terms of fixed distance strategy, um, or smaller ratio in terms of volume, um, you get better confidence in these cell type, the cell typist um, predictions. Um, 
but you're introducing bias and that we're ca capturing um, like um, cell types that have higher gene expression in general. Um, so when you have a smaller area, you're sort of getting more, um, you're more vulnerable to sparsity in the data. So cell types that have less gene expression in general are just going to be less identified. Um, so really like the strategy that um, you use um, should really depend on your data. So like different things that can affect the appropriate strategy would be like how dense the cells are in the, in the tissue. Um, and then it's cell type dependent. Like I said, um, certain cell types might have just lower expression values in general. So you might the appropriate you might want to expand more in those cases. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all I have actually. Thank you, Nick.